Greetings, nerds. This is Zena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this, this evening? I'm, I'm doing all right. It's been a mellow, weird, strange new world, um, but yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it really is. It's sort of like now, whenever, you know, before this time, like, last year just thinking we were like talking about doom patrol and even just like a month ago you know we were it was you're looking forward to like okay you know black widow's coming up and and this is happening and that you know that's happening now we're like is comic-con gonna happen <laughs> or you know oh and, no and, comic-con if you yeah. think of the olympics comic-con is canceled <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can't see, yeah, I can't see them having it. But I know it's kind of like that kind of open thing. Even the NFL draft is like probably going to go to like some Zoom meeting type format or something like that. So it's just kind of kind of wild world we're in now. Yeah, and and we again the crazy thing is, arguably, we're still in very beginning stages. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it only turned April two days ago, so yeah, or yeah, a day ago technically. So I, it just, and that's what worries me the most is that it's, I can only see things getting worse before there's any way that things will start to get better. So yeah, I just, I, I would be shocked if they had some of those events or didn't come up with a a social distancing way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a virtual comic con. That would be, that would be amazing if they had like a virtual hall H or something like that. Well, I don't think people will have anything to show though. Cause no. production stopped. Yeah. So yeah. You're just going to remind everyone, Hey, remember how we promised that you would get all of this cool stuff in 2020? Well, there was a pandemic. So now it's been postponed till 2021. Right, right. I mean, and every day. And Kevin Feige's like, that wasn't a part of the phase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like in game, you know, the five year, like, uh, hiatus has really happened. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. <clears throat> yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's the world, and it doesn't surprise me that more things like, billions are getting split seasons because they've had to stop shooting and and whatnot that's going to occur it's just also i don't know about everyone else but i'm struggling to find new things to watch or actually i know there's a lot of content and streaming services thank god for them however Mm -hmm. even when i try to consider watching other things for some reason, it's like this mental block where at the moment I start actually binging shows, I will be succumbing to my newfound reality of like, this is, this is it. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, know, okay. That makes yeah. any sense. No, it makes total sense. I mean, it's, it's kind of good for, for things like what, uh, like we're going to talk about tonight, Little Fires Everywhere, where it is sort of spread out over uh, you know, it's weekly, like, and same with uh, Star Trek Picard. I mean, it was good to, to, to have something to kind of look forward to because, you know, if, with some series, when they just drop them all at once, uh, it, it does like, uh, you know, if you go, you blow through it, then what, you, what, what do you have left? But we did get some news, I guess, as far as some of our, our Arrowverse shows, as far as firm dates of, of return. I know we had speculated some, uh, on our last show earlier this week about uh, when they're going to return. But it looks like both Batwoman and Supergirl are going to come back on April the 26th. And The Flash, in, in its abbreviated form, will come back on April 21st. And so that will at least carry us through April and, and May. And then, of course, we have a new Stargirl show that will premiere on DC app on May 18 and, and May 19. And, and the more I actually look at the Stargirl, I'm, I'm actually, I think it's going to be pretty good. I think if they keep the tone like the other DC Universe shows, obviously they'll maybe have to make some tweaks to it, uh, you know, so they can air it on the CW. But 
so far, all of them have been, for the most part, pretty solid. Hmm. You mean DC shows on CW? What do you mean by most of them? Um, well, I mean, on the DC app, you know, as far as Doom oh, Patrol. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, DC, yeah, as far as Doom Patrol, Swamp Thing, even though it got cut before it really had a chance to really grow. But, I mean, those first seven, <laughs> eight episodes were, like, amazing. And then they had to, like, hurriedly put it to to wrap it up. But, uh, and even Titans, I mean, it, the second season was definitely better than the first. And, and the Harley Quinn show, as far as their love, even though it's animated, it's been solid. So, I, I feel with, with that track record, I feel pretty good about Stargirl coming up, as coming up. Um, I for some reason, I guess I'm just not understanding that this is on the DC app and not on CW because when we first watched the trailer, I had it in my mind that it was with CW. Yeah, well, it was originally going to be just on the DC app, and then. The powers to be at Warner Brothers decided, oh, let's let's uh, also air it on the on the CW as well. But it does come on the DC Universe first, so the, that premiere date's May 18th, and then then the, the CW premiere date is May 19th. So, but the other thing about the show in an article I read this week is uh, they had already started talking about potential crossovers with uh, the Flash. Uh, even in this first season, but I guess it didn't work out. So, you know, maybe maybe in season two it'll it'll have a crossover with the Arrowverse shows since they already teased it in Crisis. Yeah, I mean that's kind of inevitable. If they move the show to air on CW, they're going to have crossovers. I mean, CW yeah. has figured all that out, and it's yeah. kind of a um, a standard. So. I'm not surprised. Again, I I just have low expectations because I was not overly enthusiastic about the show itself when I saw the trailer. And yeah, I understand what you're saying about how it it's originally supposed to be on the DC app. And when we look at that content, but there's a reason why I keep forgetting that this was supposed to be just on the DC app. And it's because when I look at that show and I compare it to Doom Patrol and I compare it to Titans, There's a lack of an edge that Mm. makes me like, yeah, so if I was a producer and I saw that, that, that Stargirl trailer, I would be like, why isn't this on CW? (laughs) (laughs) It's perfect for that kind of uh, viewership. Right, right. And and maybe that's part of it, too. I mean, maybe, like, as you said, uh, and why you forgot that it was actually going to be on the DC app is because they have kind of CW-fied the, the, the pr- promotions of it. Yeah. And and see, this is what the world is coming to. We spent probably a good 10 minutes on Stargirl and arguing about what what it was airing on. <laughs> <laughs> no news. There is no news anymore. I'm sorry. Every The news is everything is postponed. Everything is canceled. All the things that you expected to get. It's just, it's not, and I'm sorry, I'm very pessimistic this week. I I'm, I'm haven't had a great week. I'm not a cheerleader right now. Um, but yeah, this well, is just, it's, it's amazing to me what's, what the world is coming to. Yeah, well, see, that's why you have me to be your, to be your cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> In all this craziness, there's still some things that, uh, you know, it, it's not just watch, rinse, repeat. There's, there's always, a, there's always a silver lining to be found somewhere. <laughs> no, I, I, I know that. I, yeah. I've, I, I see my silver linings there. Everything. I'm just kind of over everything. But yeah. we're getting very off topic. So the last news items that you have is Titans episode director Boris Blood. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Mavuski. Confirmed Ian Glenn's Bruce Wayne will return for the third season whenever they get an opportunity to shoot that third season, which will probably be a year. 2021. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he he apparently uh, on his Instagram uh, live uh, story, said that yeah he's coming back so you know and I, I yeah you know we, we talked about that during titans and how we felt about bruce's character how they portrayed 
uh, his version of, of Bruce Wayne and Batman on, on Titans. And so uh, when I saw that, I was just sort of like, hmm, okay. Um, hopefully they, you know, they've gotten all, the story will be beyond, you know, Dick and Bruce's angst and, and maybe how they can start teaming up and working together again. Wait, you didn't like him at Bruce, as Bruce Wayne? Um, I was kind of, he was okay. He was okay. I mean, he was yeah. an okay Bruce. Okay. But I not... don't honestly remember really talking about Bruce Wayne when we talked about Titans. Yeah, what I, yeah, I mean, that's why, I, and I think that's my point. It was kind of, he was kind of forgettable. But he was, you know, he was just kind of there. And, you know, it was uh-huh. really, he played as a foil to, to, to Dick. But, and, you know, all, we, we did get sort of the, um, I mean, he, he was basically a MacGuffin for, you know, this, in, in part of the story, he's just in the second season of Titans, as far as when, when Dick left the Titans after feeling so guilty about Jericho. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling that they are probably going to continue the angst with Dick and Bruce. I mean, why else have Bruce around? Part of... Robin has to be his own character or Nightwing, whoever, however you want to call that character. So it's really that character growth. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, they did kind of have some. That was some the worst response I've ever given on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What were you saying? I was saying they did make some peace at the end of end of the second season. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, <clears throat> little fires everywhere on Hulu. Are you all caught up? Yeah, I'm up. Yeah, I'm all caught up. Watched the latest episode last night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've really, just overall, this big, I know we touched on it a little bit, but really to get in depth of the series, I've, I've really enjoyed this. It, it's been, uh, you know, as I, as I, was happy you liked Star Trek Picard when I when I suggested you you watch it. I I have to say I, I appreciate you telling me about this series because um, it it really gets into a, a lot of a lot of different issues, a lot of layers on parenthood, motherhood, uh, race, class. I mean it's, it t- it touches on a lot of things, and I, I I will freely admit I have not read the book by Celeste Ng, Ng but um, have you read the have no. the book? No, didn't even okay. know it was a book. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's apparent. Yeah, it's an adaptation that uh, Hulu did for of, of that book that was uh, written by her. So, um, so I, you know, so I, I, I can't, I won't be that that person who will be like, well, in the book it was this way because I haven't read the book, <laughs> so I, I, I can watch it without having it, uh, you know, watching it through that filter. Yeah. Which, which is good because be, as somebody who has frequently read books and that have been made into movies or TV shows, um, it's really hard not to be that person. And it definitely does make you more biased and more critical of things because in your mind, you when you read it, you interpret it a certain way and other people interpret it a different way. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, this is a really good show. Um, I was, I, I knew it was coming and, um, what Hulu did, the smartest thing that Hulu did is it dropped the first three episodes Mm -hmm. and you have to watch all three almost in a row because it is all three episodes together make the pilot. Um, I, I remember sitting down and I had a lot of time on my hand, as most people do, and I just started watching and I was like, okay, this is a little slow. All right, what's going on? And then for some reason, I'm like, okay, let's hit episode two and, and then more character development. And then episode three, events happen like a chain reaction and suddenly you're like, Oh, now I understand the story. And even last night's episode, there were a lot of revelations about Mia, about Elena, where 
the story just keeps furthering. And what it's really making clear is this is a lot about mothers and motherhood. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting how it's set in the 90s, which most people don't equate to any kind of sexual revolution or anything to do with women's rights. But you can see how these these women, um, there are certain things that their choices are different than they were than there were. 10 years um, prior or 20 years prior. Um, And also the realization that the plan they had set um, may not be what they wanted in the end. And so you have a lot of resentment. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's definitely with the pilot, the first three episodes. So we know we were first introduced to, to Elena and it, and Bill Richardson. So the, the way the series starts out is it's uh, there's a uh, fire at uh, Richardson's home. Every there's, you know, fire departments out there and, and it's, you know, very blue screen angst as far as setting the emotional tone. And then we, we then, and then whenever we get into the series itself, it's, it's four months prior to that event that we are introduced in the, at the very beginning. And so, you know, we, we see Elena who she's a newspaper reporter in middle America, you know, Shaker Heights, Ohio. And it has like the idyllic life, you know, it's like upper middle class husband's an attorney, you know, has what four kid four kids. And, and yeah, just, just, you know, dealing with the daily, grind of, of motherhood and, and, and being a professional par- professional working woman. And then, and then, and then we're introduced to Mia and, and Pearl and, you know, they are, you know, li- literally living in, in a Chevette and, <laughs> and, and when Mia and Elena first encounters Mia, she sees the car on the side, you know, in the side of the road in the parking lot there. And, she gets all like she tries to pull a blind side yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> she and, and that's elena this yeah. is now reese witherspoon is playing the exact character who mm. she played on big little lies it is mm. and if you see both shows you she's not the standout um carrie washington i would also argue is not necessarily the standout either however mia warren as a character is fascinating because she she brings this tension Mm -hmm. um where you never know how she's going to respond in some moments you think she's going to be very kind and sincere um and motherly and maternal and in other moments no, this woman has a survival instinct about her, and she is protecting her daughter in in the only way she knows how to. Yeah, and and I think and I think that's what why she, a lot of us are drawn to that character. Um, but at the same time, I think this show is just overall a good ensemble because all of the kid actors do a good job. They yeah. don't feel the the one kid actor who I think um, so far has arguably done the worst for me is is um, the girl who plays um, the 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 older daughter. I forget oh. her name. Oh, Lexi. Lexi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, see, I actually, I thought Lexi, especially in the in this last episode, and I know, uh, I, you know, we're, we're recapping, we're pretty much five episodes here in our discussion, but overall, I would see to me, Moody was the he seemed to be the the one that I would sometimes forget about, but uh, but then, it, but I think all of the kids are pretty strong because they. They, you're right in that it is a strong ensemble show, uh, with you know with Pearls, intera- who's Mia's daughter, the actress who plays her, and uh, Moody and 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 how she you know Moody and and Pearl first develop a friendship and but you know at the same time but while that's going on, uh, you know 
Carl is crushing on Moody's older brother, the oldest son, Trip, who's the jock. So you had all these various archetypes in the family too. So you had the jock, you have Moody, who's the who's the middle or second or third kid who is, and I don't have siblings, but you know he just kind of has the uh, you know the forgotten child who's just kind of there, but he's you know he's but he's very earnest. You have Lexi, who's I guess the homecoming queen, and then you have Izzy who is like the outcast and who is like doesn't put up with any kind of shit from anybody. Right. Well, I mean, they are, they all fit into those molds of like the breakfast club and everything. I just felt like out of performance wise, for Mm -hmm. some reason, even though Lexi's character has a few layers and she had some really interesting moments occur in this most recent episode with the pregnancy and becoming a disappointment which is something that they've kind of set up is the fact that Lexi idolizes her mom yeah and she wants to have her plan stick to the plan because that's what her mom did and so she's following that path and then she she put it at risk and she thought she was going to lose it she made a decision and now she's the girl who got knocked up in high school and had an abortion yeah yeah and yeah and and, and that they that was and I guess that's why I felt like th- this last episode where I really felt she f- was a very s- strong character and uh, but also but they laid the, the foundations for w- what happened in this episode not only uh, as far as her having sex with her you know boyfriend and you know she and they had this you know they, they do a lot of pop culture references in this show uh, since it's based in the nineties. And so they, you know, of course they had the Dylan and, and Brenda drop in the episode about how she and her boyfriend were going to like lose their, you know, have sex together for the first time on their prom night. And, and so, you know, so they play that up, but, but one of the things that really, like you said, as far as having a plan and stuff was like, you know, Lexi wanted to approval from her mother and, and doing all the right things. And, and like early on in the season series, where she basically st- stole like Carl's life, as far as like trying to get her ex- her writing her college essay to Yale, and and then she like tells her boyfriend uh, all about you know share you know he reads this, reads this, the thing and, and 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 part of the context was this was Pearl trying to have it to. Uh, write a letter to basically show how she did qualify for the the algebra two class. Oh, oh yeah. 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 And then, you know, and so, you know, so Lexi early on, like still stuff from, from Pearl and they have this weird kind of friendship where it's just like Lexi's just basically using Pearl for her own ends. And then whenever Lexi and her boyfriend, do have sex and then they, they they are all talking about it and 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 then we get to the scene where she they do the pregnancy test because also trip and and pearl hook up and it was her first time uh pearl's first time um and they really are the way they 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 had the scene in the bathroom where they're doing the pregnancy test they set it up so you don't know which one who who who's who's the one that's actually worried here oh i called that out immediately yeah yeah but it was, I mean, it was a fake out yeah well yeah but i mean i thought they set it up pretty well yeah um i don't i don't know about that i I I figured Lexi was tra- pregnant because when I went to go hit on the episode, she was in a gown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I already figured that out. Yeah, so, well, yeah, but I mean, just the way, but I think the, my point is the way that they are just basically using, you know, just all throughout the the series so far, how Lexi just basically uses Pearl. Well, they're they're all foils. So yeah, yeah Lexi. Lexi, again, she wants to be the good girl. She wants to be the the kid that her mother and father are proud of and can brag about to their friends. And getting into that college is mm-hmm. the 
the way that she set out to do that. Unfortunately, Lexi also lives a life of leisure and privilege. Yeah. So she doesn't have anything she had to overcome. And she knows that. Right. And so she hears this story and, and realizes, well, they don't know the truth. I'll make something up. Because, because, and, and, um, I, I understand like, like the, uh, the stolen, the, the stealing of everything, but Lexi, for, for me, I see it and I'm like, well, she, she's a bit manipulative. Like, yeah. how else is she going to get in? That's, that's her point. Like, right, right. I, I can't, she was born under certain circumstances. So is Pearl and Pearl. Right is also the person who's looking at this family of privilege, of, of luxury, of mm. upper class, and sees everything that she's always wanted. Right. I mean, right. she has a mother who's a, a set, set, thespian and makes her travel travel America, and, and they never know where they're going to be. There's no stability. She's always a new kid. She, her, she doesn't know who her dad is, and she's so she's really craving that that home life that I'm sure she's seen on TV and she sees that everyone else has. So, and they welcome her in. Right. Including Lexi. And, mm -hmm. and so she also, I think, has realized that, yes, they let her in, but she has also had to pay, in a way, to get brought in to that family. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah that's true. And... I mean, and, and, and throughout the series, they they reinforce that point pretty heavily, you know, heavily that uh, she she there there is a a price to to be accepted by this group uh, by the rich. And, and what I really like is it's not just about Pearl mm -hmm. and her need to be part of that family, but you have again Izzy, who's the youngest daughter who sees Mia and is mm -hmm. like, oh my God, you get me. You understand me. Why right. my mother has never understood me, never accepted me. And yet you I can be your apprentice. And and so I love a few episodes ago where they're they to me they did this moment where Mia freaks out because Pearl is staying at the Richardson. So she drove out to get her and and yet also Izzy shows up after the homecoming um, dance to to seek um, consolement in Mia because yeah. because what I think is also adds layers to Izzy is the fact that yes they made her the reckless child the clear outcast of the family but she's doing it because she's coming to terms with her sexuality yeah. and they said it this is again the nineties mm -hmm. when you had people like Ellen DeGeneres and everything that happened. And so I really appreciate how they're weaving that into that. I also think they made a good choice not to have Bill overreact to that revelation. And it's more about um, her relationship with her mom as opposed to her relationship with her dad. Because yeah. her dad is her confident. Her dad, she can always, um, will protect her mm -hmm. from her mom. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, that scene with, with, because it was, he was like, okay, yeah, and I, I get her, I get my daughter, and, 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 and it really was a good, it, it really painted a good picture as far as how their marriage is too, because again, um, you know, Alala has. She, she, it's, it's everything's programmed. I mean, even down to like the nights they have sex. I mean, it's like, you know, Wednesday and Saturday, <laughs> and, and you know, and 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 he is, he, he, Bill seems to be the guy that, you know, he he, he does his best. He may not be always the, you know, he, he he's he's the, he's he's sort of the stable one. Who who keeps it kind of, tries to keep it real, whereas Alana is always trying to you know be the be the perfect one with everything is is is, is it has to be just right and and you know like even in the it, when they had the the book club scene 
early in the first second episode where uh, they're 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 all sitting around. I guess they're reading the vagina monologues, and she couldn't even like say the the v word it was like so forbidden and like so like sheltered and everything and and so it, you know again it just really adds layers to their to 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 the to the story and the, to their relationship as far as why the kids you know react to their parents in different ways and how you know mia i mean how i guess alana really likes Pearl because she, she is that sort of like the daughter who, 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 who she gets, you know, and who gets, who gets her. And, and, and especially like when they were working on like the college essay, uh, as far or not the college essay, but the, the letter that Pearl wrote to, to basically, uh, you know, to get, get the class classes at the, at the school where the teacher was thinking that she was like some kid, from inner city kid from Cleveland who was just here because of quotas or whatever. So, um, you know, so it, uh, th- that, that dynamic really, really ma- makes this kind of work. And, and Mia's well, reaction. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so what I think that they're doing with Elena in those instances is really showing how, she comes off as this person who has the perfect life, very charitable, always giving to others. But she does it so that in return, she gets praise. She gets put on her pedestal. She gets people to be envious of her. I mean, their best friends and everything that's going on with the daughter and who the mother is and the the um, adoption and everything. She, Elena comes at it from a p- place of, let me do this to help you. Mm-hmm. And it's not, and this is what Mia picks up on from the very beginning about Elena. She's not doing it to sincerely help them, but it's right. almost like a debt. Yep. And and I think that that Pearl also under like she may not fully understand um, how manipulative that can be because. Elena hasn't done anything viciously towards her, mm-hmm. but she also, um, she, and, and I think really what happened was that Mia in that instance couldn't help her daughter. Mm-hmm. She, she couldn't. I mean, uh, when you have that kind of prejudice, it's not going to help if Mia shows up, but right, unfortunately right. due to circumstance, if you have Elena sh- show up, Elena's going to pull the strings, make the smiles, bring the cookies and everything, and it's, it's going to be fine. So I yeah. think there was some sort of resentment and jealousy because M- Elena could actually help Pearl with her problem and Mia could not. And that's what they keep doing with all three girls and arguably all of the kids in the show mm-hmm. is that when they come to these problems... Um, the problems are structured in the way where the other mother will be able to step in and help where the, the, um, other one could not and is failing. Yeah. Yeah. Except for, yeah. And, and getting to, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that, that also gets to this, this, this week's episode where, Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi does have the abortion. And then of course, obviously Mia picks up right on right on it as soon as she saw her what what happened mm-hmm. and and you know so as Lexi's trying to confide to Mia and 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 get you know she I guess she I don't know she wants like absolution or, or or her to say hey it's okay I mean Mia is Mia rightfully well not rightfully but maybe rightful is not the right word but Mia Oh, it, she, Mia was right. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, Mia was right. It's, yeah. it's a right word, and and I love that moment because yeah. again, in that instance, um, when Lexi asks her, "What did I do the right thing?" Yeah, there's this pause and this tension of is Mia is gonna say like, "Yeah, I think you did. You're too you're too young," or but instead, it's more about like. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you anything. I'm not gonna step yeah. in and play mom towards you. You've done. You, you're not. 
you're you using me and you just use Pearl. So no. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a big difference between her and Elena, where I think Elena would have said what, if it had been Pearl, mm. she, she would have done the, the thing that we expected, you know, f- from any mother with an imper- maternal instinct. Yeah. Um, but that's not Mia. Mia's right. more about um, the the right, and in a way, I think it did help Lexi. I think that that moment is going to change her trajectory and potentially lead to um, some growth down the line. So I I think in a way that it it was more of like the um, what do they call it the the harsh the yeah, tough, tough tough love, love. yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and I guess I was trying when I, you know, is you know, given that it's dealing with reproductive issues and those kind of things, I was trying to, uh, you know, I didn't want to like say, yeah, she, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, she, she, she did tell her what she, she you know, what she needed to hear, and uh-huh. and not, not sugarcoat it that, that Lex Elena probably would have, and and you know, it it it, it was. Also, in some ways, interesting too, because when Pearl talked to her about to to Mia about what happened, her relationship with her hookup with Trip, she was, you know, given that she was very understanding in a way. Given that you know, early earlier on in the season, she was just like you know, sex is sex, but then. Um, when Pearl, Pearl was explaining how, you know, how she thought it was going to be exciting and different and, and you know, for Trip, he was just kind of like, well, it's just a hookup, you know? And, 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 but Pearl was, Mia was actually very understanding of, of, of how Pearl was feeling this, I guess, you know, of her feelings and, and, and she did show the capacity to be maternal and supportive where you know we've seen oh. other situations where she just flew off and like was like not so and, and to the where pearl would go and just lock herself in a room and this is and just stay away from her mom because because of the unpredictability well i don't know if it's because of the unpredictability but it's more of mia reacts overreacts to the situations when she feels like she's losing pearl to the richardson's in yeah, that true. moment last night it was more, my daughter's opening up for me. I have to take advantage of this moment. She's sharing with me. Um, I, I and, and I think this goes, well, like, whether you're a mother or a father, and it, to an extent, you, you want to be their friend. You, wanna, mm-hmm. you want them to tell you their secrets, and you want to be involved and feel like you have are a part of their life. Granted, I don't have children, so I don't know, but oh, I can right. assume... Yeah. And and so I think that's why we saw that come out of her, and and also Pearl didn't get pregnant. Right. Yeah, yes. Okay. There's that thing too. Yeah, she was careful, and she used protection. So she, so Mia was like, okay, you were smart. Okay, it may have been disappointing, but you were smart about it. Right. I also with the whole trip thing. Um, that that the moment he invited her to watch TV with them while Moody was out, I was like, oh God, they're gonna yeah. do this love triangle. Yeah. And they are, and I don't really care for it. Um, however, I did appreciate in the most recent episode, Trip comes off very good in the sense that he he clearly has no idea how to deal with this because he's had sex, but he's never truly liked someone the way he likes Pearl. And, and his initial reaction was not because of his feelings with to Pearl. It was more also watching his mother kind of have her fall out with Mia and there being a clear divide. Um, Because Trip is very much like Lexi. I think Mm -hmm. Trip also, wants to be the son that their his parents are proud of and knows his role has has his place and pearl and his relationship with pearl could jeopardize that for and and i think truly 
he is more fearful to lose his brother um, because, yeah. and and how he's going to ever explain that to Moody. Yeah. Um, but another um, another interesting thing about Bill as the father character, I listened to an interview with Joshua Jackson, and he said something that I have always in my head whenever Bill has a scene is that Bill's he. For him, it's all about he he likes the routine. He likes the stability that their life was before Mia Warren. Mm -hmm. And especially in this last episode when Elena goes off to New York City on her own, things are starting to unravel. And mm -hmm. there's a threaten uh, there's something threatening about that. And I yeah. find that so interesting because it's not just that it's a woman but she's also African American. She's also impoverished, and she also comes from independence, where she's raising her daughter without mm -hmm. any man. Yeah. Um, which t I don't think was as common. I mean, right now it's very common for yeah. single mothers, single fathers, even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that that era, that decade, did there was a change where women and um men would would raise children alone and there was there's a threat there to this idea that to have a household you have to have both you have to yeah. have both mother and the father yeah that's a, that's that's a very very good point and uh yeah it, it, and i think that's yeah, i think having this show set in the late 90s because it really is that transition period where uh a lot of these types of issues were being addressed and um yeah and 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 it, it it was sort of the bill does represent the, the social norms and mm -hmm. how that is being threatened but at the same but it's very it, it's very interesting too though with that on on the one hand as far as those issues you know with race and gender and single parenthood and but then he was but then you juxtapose that with how he was actually okay with with Lexi being 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 gay. Yeah. So it's just you know so I think that's that's the the, the what I like about the show is you know when it, it you know because it does get I mean freely admit it gets pretty heavy handed sometimes dealing with race and class right. issues. I mean it just hits you right over the head with it, and especially we haven't even talked about the the, the Chinese the the. the baby and and her uh giving her child up for adoption yet but uh but yeah it does hit those things but but it does it in a way that you know especially when you look at it in the contemporary times um it it it, it, it does it in a way that's still heavy-handed yet honest in some ways too yeah I think that the show, the writing of the show, there's a few moments where race is brought up or class is brought up, and I'm like, okay, we we get it. Yeah, 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 we <laughs> get it. Yeah, 2020, we get it. Yeah. However, there are also moments where they say something that isn't as direct, and yet has all of the subtleness that really makes the story so much better and what they're trying to get across um that i that i really appreciate so it's very balanced in that yeah. sense where yeah. Yeah. for every cringe moment there's also a moment where it's like no this is good writing yeah um and and so so yeah i i think overall i would describe it as as very balanced in that sense where mm -hmm. Um, could they deal with less? Yeah, but I also sometimes people need to be spoon fed, I guess, or else it still wouldn't be an issue. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So now that we've spoiled the first five episodes for everyone listening, just watch the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. What yeah. else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. And actually, there are a few things that happen we haven't talked about. Um, but overall, what we really want to get across to anybody who's still listening is that the character, this is a very three-dimensional show, 
it's a slow burn, but there's a lot of revelations, especially towards the end of every episode, that makes you want to see what's going to happen next and want to yeah. know more. And and they really are peeling away at the layers of each character. And and from the very first shot of the pilot, you know this is building up to a big fire. Yep. <laughs> a very big fire, yeah. We're we're lighting matches right now, and 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 so so it does feel like you're you're on a roller coaster, and you're just still grinding up to the very top of it, um, just waiting to see what that what will be that um, spark that truly ignites everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, it will be, and um, I completely agree with what you said about the series, and and. In, in each layer from uh, in the first five and you know even to what drives alana as far as her 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 motivations and and we we get some you know we get a flashback for her to her days in college and and her, her relationships that sort of in this last episode that provides some additional context for like why she is the way she is and and being a, uh, having this idyllic plan of a life and and also yeah definitely go if, if you if you've been if you've listened to our show because to hear our take on the first five episodes and you've been watching it uh, you know hope you will continue to talk about us I hope you'll join us for the ride but if uh, if by listening to us you are now interested in it. We didn't spoil everything, so there, there's a lot. There's a lot of things in the first five, ep- five episodes that uh, uh, will will make you stick around for for the the balance of the season. Yeah, and it and if you watch it and you don't like it, tweet at Will. Don't tweet at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, tweet right. at Sarah. She's the one that got us onto this. <laughs> All right, Will. Where can our followers find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk, S-W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. Please follow me at Twitter, <laughs> at S-J Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And also, like, tell us what we should be watching. I am dying for some good recommendations. I'm never going to watch things that Will recommends to me, people. So I really <laughs> tell me that I should be watching so that we can talk about it, and then I can claim it as my own recommendation. Regardless, um, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and wherever you get your podcasts. People stay healthy. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Bye.